Hi there, and welcome to One Body, One Life, proudly sponsored by Jamae's Fine Foods. I'm Vicky Nguyen, and I'm on a personal mission to live to 120, and I would absolutely love to take you on this journey with me. This fortnightly show is focused on longevity and understanding how we can all live longer and stronger through diet, exercise, lifestyle, nutrition, and so on. Each episode, we will uncover tips and tricks to living your healthiest and happiest life for as long as physically possible. I'll be chatting to the experts as well as people who have defied the odds and explore various treatments and modalities to help us all reach optimal wellness. So today I get to talk all things happiness with my dear friend, Danny Stevens. Danny and I met online about five years ago and we hit it off straight away. Not long after that, we met in Melbourne in person and we spent about a half a day together and since then have been like besties ever since. Danny is a natural born motivator. She's high energy, effervescent. She's a mother of four who works very hard every single day to ensure her and her gorgeous family are all living their best lives possible all the while sharing her hectic life with her followers. In her previous life, Danny worked in IT and T, in sales, marketing and and management, but it's her role as a mother that really lights her up the most. She's relished in being a stay-at-home mum since 2007 and has created an incredible following via her online platforms, where she shares recipes, fitness ideas, lifestyle inspiration, etc. with the world. So today I'm happy and very excited to talk to Danny about fun and happiness. We all know how important important it is to be happy, to live a life that's fulfilling and that lights you up. And we also all know how important it is or how it feels rather when we are not happy. So welcome to the show, Danny. Thank you. That was amazing. I, you, you know how rarely we find in life people sort of talking about you, like it's really lovely to hear um, a, a little bit about me. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much. I'm so <laughs> excited to be with you. And your community. Of course. So tell us about how you landed where you are today. Like, give us your backstory. So how I landed today, I'm 47. Um, I was in the, you know, it t industry, as you just mentioned, in the big, high-pressured work, uh, white-collar corporate workforce. And it was just go, 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 targets, pipelines, um, get up early. So it was just go, 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 smoker, drinker, just full on. So then I ended up getting... Married, having my first baby, and obviously life changes. Um, fast forward, I have you know four kids under under six. My girlfriend sort of comes over and says, "Danny, how the heck do you do it? I'm, I don't even have children. I can't even get out the door on time. You even manage to pack four lunches and a green smoothie for yourself. How the hell do you do what you do with a smile on your face? Your body's rocking, and you're just always happy." And I'm like, "What do you mean? People aren't like this." Just kidding. I just said, well, who's going to want to, uh, you know, follow me? She goes, you've got to do it. You've got to get on Instagram. I'm like, what's Instagram? I had Facebook for my mother's group and all my families from former Yugoslavia. So we always had that as our communication. And then I just thought, you know what? I'm going to upload this Instagram app and just take a photo. And then I just discovered the world of hashtag. Wow. I was doing muffin top, uh, fit yummy mummy. Um, you know, sleepless nights, you know, all this sort of stuff. And then obviously started to attract women that were Googling and also just searching those hashtags and started to grow. And then I ended up sort of landing big uh, women's health, Lorna Jane, like major, major campaigns in that first year. And that's, and I'm talking 2012. So um, this is Zali's one now. And, um, so it was very, very early in the whole Instagram world. So that just blew me away because I thought, but I'm just being a mum. I'm, you know, feeding my kids. I'm going to the pub. It's what I do. I think I was one of the OGs, you know, pushing the pram while I was doing a squat as I'm, you know, at the park or they're swinging and I'm sort of doing a squat or I'm doing chin ups while they're climbing through everything. I just thought this is what, you know, all women will be doing. And, I don't need to share this, but little did I know, I had all my sisters and friends that needed that sort of support and encouragement. So I just thank the day that my girlfriend said, you need to do this because I absolutely love what I do every single day. Nothing has changed in my 10 years soon to be being um, online and creating my own personal brand. So what, what motivates you? Because you're always so energetic and upbeat. So what? tell us what your source of happiness is. I recently have sort of, you know, been delving deep. Um, so mine is one word. It's grace. It's waking up. It's taking my first breath. 
It's the little simple things because there are people that have no longer have the privilege of being here on earth. So I've had losses in my life where I've, you know, lost family members, friends that I just go, you know what? I am so grateful for my life. I am so grateful that I can just, you know, have a house and, you know, four healthy children and friendships and it's just the little things. I seriously, like I don't fist pump down the road going, oh, yeah, I love my car, I love my body, I love, you know. It's just literally, it's just the little things that just give me that grace and that motivation every day to continue me being happy. That's awesome. That's so good because not many people can say that because a lot of people re- you know, depend on material or status or money or whatever to make them happy and that's their source of happiness. Yeah, and I would have been that person as well, you know, with the high-flying, you know, the suits and the shoes and the, you know, the leased vehicles, you know, we're all rocking it. We're all like, oh, my gosh, this makes me happy. Look how hot I look or look at my car and all that stuff. But I think once you start peeling off those layers, you just go, uh uh-uh. uh, money and materialistic things, do they really bring me that happiness or is it just that facade and that mask that people wear throughout their day? And it's short lived. Often I remember like going through doing the yoga teacher training and part of the philosophy is all about when you have an attachment to material objects like that, that's not sustainable because you want the next thing and the next thing. And it's this constant cycle where what you're talking about is like internal and it's sustainable because you can appreciate anything when, like you're saying, you take your first breath and you're already feeling happy. Absolutely. And it's like you were saying, like fast fashion, that just goes. Cars, they get a new model. iPhones, oh my gosh, are you with it yet? You know, so could you just imagine if that's what your life, you know, was? Is that what really makes you happy? So yeah, being happy within yourself, you can then just, you know, achieve anything. So you live by the mantra, which I love, is dream big, believe, make it happen. So how has that mantra influenced you and your life choices? I think just being a little kid, I used to sort of daydream all the time and my mum would be just like, oh, Daniela, you always dreaming as if that's going to happen. <laughs> so my mum, <laughs> bless her heart, I think she was my motivator um, because she was just, uh, she was from a European background, tried to keep me really humble. So I, I understand how she so, she brought me up and I'm thankful because I am on that other Richter scale so much more happier and I find the small things that make me so happy. Um, but yeah, because I'm such a daydreamer, I then started to manifest, you know, I used to just in my own head talk about it and then lo and behold, things would happen. And I used to remember this as a little kid. I'm like, wow, this is not, this is just what it is. It is what it is. And then obviously as you get older, you just notice that those positive, you know, mantras and affirmations and you're sort of going, you know, I really do hope that X, Y, Z, you then go, oh my gosh, that just happened before. Instead of me going, oh, I can't, oh, this always happens to me. I'm never going to get that job. I just knew that chitter-chatter back then um, didn't give me growth. So um, fast forward as an adult now, that's why I just went, oh, my gosh, I was such a dreamer, but I believed in myself. Even though my mum wasn't the biggest optimistic woman in my life, I then had that inner child that fucking believed in myself. So that was where my belief came from. But then you can't just sit there. You've got to make it happen. So you have to do the work. So when I started in social, I did this, um, it was just by, by chance. I, I've never ridden a bike and I did um, six of the rides to conquer cancer and they're 200 kilometers each. Wow. So I'll never forget my husband going, babe, that's a thousand kilometers. That's not like <laughs> our little bike ride with the kids, five <laughs> kilometers around the lake. Exactly. It's huge. And I'm looking at him going, yeah. I can do it. I've just had a baby, mind you, and I had this pelvis instability. My mum's like, what do you mean you're going to ride the bike so you can't fit on your bum on the the And I'm kind of hearing all these people kind of telling me I'm not going to be able to do it. And so that inner belief kicked in and then the way I made it happen was I did the hashtag and I called it the Richard Branson Project. I thought, you know what? I need to get awareness for these rides to conquer cancer. I'm a mum of four. I can't stand on the side of the road of the traffic lights trying to get, you know, coins to – because you had to like – I think it was about 2500 each ride that you had to sort of um, get, you know, donations and stuff. And um, so I thought, how am I going to get awareness? And the captain of our team just said, man, make some noise. You're, with you and your, you're a social media butterfly. You're the superstar. Who can you get to get the attention? And I just went, 
who's one of the biggest and, you know, who's inspired me in my lifetime? And I thought, Richard Branson, he's such a go-getter. It's something that he would do. So um, I started taking photos and I held up a, a sign saying, Richard, if I get a million likes, will you come and ride with me and the Vision Crusaders? And then, of course, I had all these pessimistic people going, oh, so has Richard Branson called you yet? Have you got some money, you know? And I'm just going, no, not yet, but he will. And so, again, my mindset, my language, my dialogue back to myself going, yes, I will. Things don't happen overnight. I know he's a busy man and I know people ask for money, you know, all the time, but I wasn't asking for money. I was asking him to participate in something that was passionate for me, that had purpose. So I'm at the hairdressing salon because back then I used to dye my hair brunette because I had this silver halo and I'm flipping through Instagram and I kid you not, I was in a Ballarat um, hairdressing salon. I'm sure you would have heard me and we wouldn't have even known each other back then, Vicky, but I <laughs> screamed and jumped out of my chair with all the paint on my hair, the, the colour on my hair, and the ladies just went, oh, my gosh, what's happening there? What, why are you so excited? And I ran out of that salon. It was in, on a roundabout, and I'm just going, yes, yes, yes. And I'm like some maniac going around this roundabout. I've come back inside. They're like, you've got to tell us what's happening. Showed them the photo and there's Richard Branson holding a sign saying, Danny, good luck to you and the Vision Crusaders. Oh, We're cheering alongside wow. you. And That's I so... have just gone, oh, fist pumping the air. Thank you, pessimistic people out there that didn't believe because I made it happen. And it was it was my, my supportive community too because what they did was they then started to hold up a sign saying, Richard, will you ride with Danny and the Vision Crusaders? And it just snowballed. Wow. And I couldn't have done it without a supportive network. So there's my dream big belief. <laughs> Make it happen, little story. And that's one, one of many. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. I love that. Well, you know, like that saying, what goes into the mind comes out into the world. And it all starts with that initial thought and that internal dialogue. So that's incredible. So why do you think, I mean, obviously a big part of the work that you do, actually, even by default, it, you motivate people. Why do you think people need a motivator or someone like you to kind of look to each day to, to pep them up? I think we need to be our own motivators. So if you, if you align your goals, your vision, your purpose, whatever is your zing, whatever is your why, you don't need a motivator. You need me to guide you and to cheer you along the way, but you yourself should be your own motivator. So it's just our support network. That, you know, just gives me goosebumps now while I'm talking to you. I mean, that is what drives me every day. It's because I love what I do, so I'm just motivating myself. You don't motivate me to go, oh, get out of bed, Danny, and go do your meditation, or Danny, go, you know, make yourself um, a, a healthy meal for your children. I do it. And if my mindset isn't in the healthy zone, I'll go take out, fast food, junk yeah, food. Yeah. But if my mindset is on, I love my body, I love my mind, I love my life, you know, I want to be a great ro role model, I'll go in that fresh food aisle versus the packaging, fast food, quickly microwave a hot meal for your kids for dinner. Yep, yep, yep. So we are our own motivators. Absolutely. But do you find that people, I guess, lean on you in a way to help? Look, they do, but I think that's why the language I would just say is more of a support person. Yes, like yeah. I'm the guide. You know, yep. it's like, Danny, you're there already. Can to help you empower help them. So that's correct. Because I can't motivate them to get them out of bed unless that's I physically right. drag you out. And then if you're out there with me, you'll be like, oh, I really don't want to be here. I'm pretending to like it. So, um, so yeah, I think it's more of a support system of um, like-minded people. And, yes, I'm there along the way to cheer you along for whatever, you know, your goals are. But, um, yeah, look, I have people that I look up to as well. So I, I, get, I get where you're coming from, but I just wanted to share with your audience that, you know, we are our own motivators and then you connect with like-minded people to support you along that journey. Because if you don't have people that are supporting you and they're all the toxic, you know, say nay, 
you know, negative Nancys, well, then you're not going to succeed in your mission in life. So do you think it's critical for people to find happiness? I was having this conversation the other day and just talking about, um, actually with my sister, about like, can we live with subpar levels of happiness? Like, because there's a lot of things people I feel live happily with that, you know, mediocre level of happiness. Absolutely. Like in my book, I say that happiness is our birthright. Like, You know, I do get some people going, oh, come on, Danny, you can't necessarily be happy all the effing time, like seriously. And I'm like, you know what? (laughs) If happiness, if this positive energy is giving me my natural dopamine and oxytocin and this natural stuff that is always just this adrenaline of, of happiness, and it's all because I am around people, like minded people and the connection, then I deserve to feel like this. You're the one that's not connecting. You're the one that's just not aligned to what you love and, you know, desire because of either fear of how our conditioning was, you know, being raised as children. Um, But definitely our happiness, it should be number one through our social connection, through human happiness. Like you have to, because otherwise we talked about it before, the cars, the dress, the shoes, that's not really going to make us happy long term. Um, family and, you know, lovers, work and, and friends will always sort of, you know, give you that, that happiness jab. But um, granted, there are days where you have bad things that happen in your life and that is life. So you have a choice. Mourn about it. You know, my dad committed suicide. I mourned my heart out. I purged. But then I just went, you know what? That's life. That was his choice. I can't now carry this rock in my backpack and just feel so heavy and like in regret because he chose the path for him. So I continue my life living my life, not somebody else's. Absolutely. Wow, that's interesting. And so what about, so, so you, obviously people will DM you all the time because you have got such a, a presence on social media. Do you find, is there a common theme that people are seeking advice or um, the most? Like are they looking to you for something that seems to be quite prevalent? Yes, I think people, there's a, there's a few that kind of, you know, my top three, but, you know, everyone, you just ask them, how are you? Oh, I'm so busy. I'm like, okay, but how are you? Sorry, I'm just asking how you are. Put the busy container away for a second. How are you? Touch your heart. I'm talking to you, not your freaking busyness. Um, so people always just say, Danny, I don't know how you do it. You've got four kids. You run an online business. You find time to work out. You find time to go to events. Uh, so they're looking at me to sort of time manage their world. So they want to live in a stress-free environment because they just panic. They get home and go, oh, I haven't cooked dinner. I'll go to Danny Stevens. She did a meal prep, meal planner. Oh my gosh, she did one big batch of like a bolognese sauce and she's created five meals throughout that whole week. Brilliant. Had it with pasta, had it with a salad in like those salad cups with veggies. Then the other night it was in a pie or something, but she just did one meal that created five meals. Brilliant. So they're coming for quick tips to just, you know, make their day a little bit less stressful Um, and also a lot lately of love, like their love connection with their partners, um, you know, trying to reignite the love within themselves to have their own self-belief to dream big, believe and make it happen because they see me doing it. They're going, oh my gosh, I want what you're having. Like, what is it? Like, I'm like, well, bring it back to yourself. What's happening in your world that you're not fully satisfied? Is it because, oh, I can't leave this situation because, you know, my boss might think, you know, I'll get demoted. Or if you're with a partner, look, no, no, I'm going to keep, you know, putting up with that behavior because, oh, I don't want to be on my own and this is okay. So we're always constantly like shifting our boundaries. So no wonder people sit there going, how come she's doing that? I want to do that. Start with yourself and start unpacking those rocks in your backpack. I'm just using that scenario because I came away from a four-day workshop where a lady was wearing a backpack and all the burdens that we carry from our parents, our boss, our whoever, the backpack gets freaking heavy. So you start offloading that weight 
and you be you. But that goes back like even to that living with that subpar level of happiness, you know. I mean, mm. that's people, it's, it's I guess, what you're willing to accept for yourself. You know, are, exactly. are you happy to keep carrying around those rocks in the backpack forever or do you want to offload all of them? Like it, I guess it's such an individual thing, isn't it, what people are willing to put up oh. with. And you, you'll always, you know, sit with it. I'm not going to feel your pain. You're going to go, oh, my gosh, I did that again. What, what's going on? What That inner voice that, you know, we call it cold and pricklies in our tummy for the kids when I try and sit down with them, for them to feel their intuition. I always tell them, you will always know what brings you happiness. If you feel that warm and fuzzy, then go for it. If you have that cold and prickly sensation and mummy has maybe taught you something in the back, you know, subconscious, Ultimately, you as a little human, you are starting to learn good, bad, you know. So I want you to identify that feeling. So when that red flag comes up, it could be like just have a think about it. How am I feeling? Shall I pursue it? Because if you keep um, pursuing those red flags, 10, 20 years down the track, you're going to be somewhere where you've just gone, oh, my gosh, I've been doing this all along. Like, what about me? So that is so, so important for everyone that's listening to just sit, sit with themselves. You have the answers to your happiness. No one else can tell you how to be happy. What will you put up with? Exactly, exactly. So obviously, I mean, at this age, um, we're all pretty much, we know what we need on the daily to do. We know what we need to do rather to feel happy. But so how do you stay happy and upbeat all the time? What's your thing? Um, I guess. It, it varies. Like, you know, that first breath in the morning, like I try and control my breath in the you know, first thing in the morning. You can imagine I've got four kids in the morning, you know, grabbing me. So I've always had the ritual of just a bit of breath work. You know, my meditations aren't, you know, for the hour or half an hour. They can purely just be for a 10, 15 minute pause in my morning. Um, I don't do the phone in the morning anymore. I used to because um, I just felt that energy was just like, oh, my gosh, quick, I've got to get, you know, the smoothies and the kids off, off onto the school bus. I've got to get back and email and do this. And I never wanted to start my day off like that. I do love what I do. That, that's the thing, right? That's my kicker. What I do personally is now my personal brand and my business. But I also then realized, hang on, I don't want my children being impacted by something that I say, hey, this keeps me happy, but I'm not then paying attention to them, if that makes sense. Um, so my breathing, my breath work and just stopping for me is huge. Um, obviously eating well. And I mean, not a ritual, you know, to just go, oh, here we go, dinner and let's just, or a, a feast that you just keep eating and eating, but do it, you know, for nutrient reasons to fuel your body. Um, and yeah, the other way I keep happy is just I move my body. You know, I love doing, you know, my yoga and then my Pilates sessions. I love bike riding. I t normally kind of talk to you when I'm bike riding um, and just mix it up with a bit of gym work. I couldn't just do one thing every day. So I love mixing it up. And that's why I share it on my channel. Like one day I'll be just, you know, relaxing with a meditation with my 10,000 steps because I encourage people to walk 10,000 times a day. And that's, you know, park 500 meters from school drop off and the return is all, is one kilometer already. And you can just do that eight times. And it goes like that throughout your day. Don't think that you've got to go walk for an hour because I know people are pretty time poor. Um, and just reading, reading and empowering myself and, and sharing that with people is what keeps me happy. And of course, connecting with you, Vicky, every single day. You make me happy. <laughs> Likewise. Honey. And music. Music is such a big part of your life and my life oh, too. <laughs> music. I should have. Oh, absolutely. I'm always doing the hashtag music motivation. Well, today's Wednesday uh, workout, I just put um, a song there. So even on International Women's Day, I was like, I'm every woman, you know, and I'm just, yeah, I yep. just love it. You know, people love when I'm sing in the car with the kids and I just it's just it's a joy. Great. I just love I just love life. Yeah, it's beautiful. But you've had a couple of massive life changes. Like you went you turned you went to plant base and you've stopped dyeing your hair. Tell us about that journey and has that made you happier? Like do you feel freer? Oh, I just got off another podcast just talking about age like diversity and pro age. Because we are in a society where we have to look plastic fantastic you know we just heaven forbid we have a you know a laugh line or any you know wrinkles so I was 
caught up in that whole, oh my gosh, I've got to dye this white head, you know, desperately wanting to come out every two weeks. I'm like, spending $400 at a hairdresser every month because mine was just growing like every, you know, fortnight I'd be in the salon. So I'm wearing caps, you know, in the first week when I've got meetings or I'm trying to put this chalk spray stuff. Oh. And I'm like, what are you covering, Danny? Like, yes. What the hell? Yeah. And when I was 40, I said to my uh, hairdresser, I said, oh, I'm thinking of going grey. And he goes, oh, darling, no way am I going to let you go grey. You're going to look old, love. And I'm like, really? Like my hairdresser's even telling me this. So I'm just like, what am I going to do? And then the years went on and I'm just like, nah, this is just not right. And then, you know, my mum's always been white and, um, and we look very similar. And I turned to uh, my husband and I just said, oh, Babe, I'm, I'm thinking of actually just going all white. Like I'm thinking of just letting my hair go and what do you reckon? He goes, are you kidding? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. He goes, I don't want to be waking up to my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. And I've just gone, oh, really? You know, I get his point. We do look very similar. But I just went, oh, I've got no one in my corner. So I just went, you know what? Bugger it. It's about my inner happiness. I'm the one who's peeved off wasting time in a hairdressing salon getting my hair dyed and I think you've been in, in the hair salon with me when yes, I had my hair I dyed have. that time. Yep. You know? So I just went, look at all the time, the money, the chemicals, all because the media or just the way it is today, we have to look like we're useful. So I just went, nah, stuff it and two years ago uh, completely like they dyed my hair to the lightest color it could go. So there would, wouldn't be like that big zebra, white and black kind of contrast. So I did that twice. And um, yeah, two years on now, I have strangers coming up to me. I'm, I'm sure my husband thinks I'm having an affair <laughs> because I'm just always having random people just going, oh my gosh, your hair is so hot. <laughs> and I'm looking at my husband going, Yes. I'm <laughs> um, I'm not my mother in law, you know. So well, I just went, how happy and like just bring in my step and just like you nailed it before, I am so happy. Like I feel empowered and I feel like I can do so much more and help other women that are just considering, oh, do I do it? Like I've got girlfriends that go, I wish my hair was grey, I, I would grow it out. But, you know, everyone's different. So, you know, what ever makes you happy and this was one of the most happiest things that ever happened in my life. It's so good. It's so good. And you seem so much freer for doing it as well. Yeah. And it's like you've yeah, attracted so. more into your life just by making that change, even with your recent modelling that you've been doing. Oh, that was funny because there's this audio new sort of app. It's in beta mode. It's called Clubhouse. And I was in a room and there's a lot of American people on it um, typically, but there was a room called Vegemite on Toast. So I thought, okay, let me go in there. That seems common and it's not all about, hey, how to make billions of dollars and, you know, um, be an entrepreneur and stuff like that. So this was just like generic talk and someone was just talking about just, you know, going to the hairdresser. She's got to go dye her hair. And I put my hand up and I said, thank goodness my time is back. You know, I've, you know, ditched the bottle or, you know, the hair dye. And they all just sort of, because obviously my profile has got the, the white hair, they all just went, oh, my gosh, we were looking at you, Danny, just saying, what a dream. Look at your hair. And lo and behold, in that room was the CEO of a modeling agency. And she said, Danny, we want you. She goes, we are all about, you know, diversity with everything, with, you know, size and race and um, pro age. And, yeah, so I'm starting a modeling sort of career even though I've been working with brands, because I've got a lot of, of my community saying, oh, Danny, but you know, you've always just been a, a, a model, like a role model to us anyway. You're going to gun it. It's amazing. So it's something very new, but I am finding it very, um, like, you know, I don't, I don't want people to think you've got to be a model to feel empowered, but because of my story, I feel empowered to just share my journey of going grey, of having four kids, of being a stay-at-home mum and making a successful online business by just living your truth, your passion of, you know, being happy. Absolutely. And it looks so good on you. I mean, everything, you know, Thank happiness you. looks good on everyone, really. But I feel like, you know, what I love about you the most is the rawness and the realness that you provide. And it's so relatable to, to everyone from all different ages. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I think a, a happy place makes you healthy. So if you're not happy for those people that are stuck somewhere, 
you're not going to be healthy. You know, that's a reason why perhaps your body is telling you or it's shutting down in certain areas. Exactly. You need to start taking those rocks out of your backpack or peeling those onion layers, whatever, you know, analogy you want to use because your health is the first thing that will give you the indication of whether or not you are happy within yourself. And tell us about your plant-based journey. Yes. So that happened sort of three years ago and it's kind of been a building block or like a jigsaw puzzle where like the last jigsaw sort of fit in and, you know, and I'm not a hundred percent plant-based. I've got four kids that sort of go, oh, mom, can I please have, you know, if we're out for dinner, can I have a chicken schnitzel? I'm like, look, you guys can do whatever you like, you know, Um, but I do uh, primarily cook plant-based and you know, it's just what I love doing now. Like it's, uh, you know, I don't intentionally go, oh, let's get a, I don't know, a, a chook and let's roast a chook tonight. It's more about, oh, let's, you know, grill some beautiful capsicum and an eggplant and being really creative with all the fruit and vegetables. And because I've had a lot of people pass with cancer, it's the first thing that doctors say. Yep. Get rid of your meat and go organic, exactly. plant-based. So to me, that just, you know, raised alarm. Of course, for the animals and absolutely for the environment as well. Um, yeah, we try and do as much plant-based as possible. Sort of, you know, nearly caused a, a bit of a, a divorce <laughs> scenario with my husband because how dare I take away meat from his <laughs> life? But you know, he was never a huge meat eater, and um, you know, he could always cook meat or go out and eat meat. But um, yeah, he might just have it on occasions during the week as well, but primarily plant-based, yeah. But I love it because you've got these little things that you've done along the way since I've known you that ha- has also encouraged and motivated other people to jump on board, like, you know, going plant-based. Yes, that's it. Just baby steps. Like, it's just, you know, like, I, I mean, I guess when I say baby steps, like, even though I've sort of, I'm one or the other, it's like with my alcohol, I've, you know, I'm, I'm celebrating 500 days tomorrow, like, you know, not drinking. And it's just, if somebody can kind of relate to my story, because I drank to numb the pain of something that was going on in my life. Something went wrong. Let's go down to the pub, you know, all the boys, you know, let's go down to the pub. Let's, you know, chill out. Or some women would sort of say, oh my gosh, you know, the kids, they just give me the ear. It's, Come on kids, go away. Mum is having a, a vino. You know, so there's always a reason why we're turning to a vice. And I just wanted to show that, hey, I'm going to fight my demons. I want to find out what it is that it's making me turn to cigarettes or alcohol, drugs or food or sex or whatever my addiction was or my vice. I wanted to just own it and go enough is enough, you know. So, um, But I do recommend baby steps because I also went caffeine free and someone just went, oh my gosh, Danny, I can't do it. I can't (laughs) keep up with you. I've got to have my coffee. And I said, look, I only did it because I'm such an addictive like personality. Like I couldn't wake up and not have a coffee. And I'm showing this to my kids. Like my kids tell me today, they just go, Mom, I love you so much. You wake up and you show me that you don't need a coffee. You don't need, you know, whatever it is to function and to be a happy human. And to me, that is the biggest reward that I've ever got for, you know, it, since being in the corporate field. That is my mission. Like if I can show my kids that they don't need those things in their lives or to attach themselves to people or to things, you know, that is the Job biggest, done. you know, reward for me and my biggest happiness really because it's it's what I do every day and that's, you know. Absolutely. The kicker of what I do. Exactly. And tell us about your coaching. Yeah, so pretty much, you know, with my DMs, everyone's asking me all these, you know, questions, you know, at least I, I, I want to live a, a healthy life. So it depends. I can do whole of business, you know, of your life, whole of life coaching where you just want direction with, you know, relationships food, movement, we just talk a little bit about, you know, what's happening in your world, you know, so we get down to the nitty gritty and then we work out on a plan or you just sort of want to chat to me about food and, you know, we just do recipes and we tag each other and, you know, we either do Insta stories together and it's like one-on-one coaching. So, um, yeah, that's a load of fun. I think I'm looking at maybe doing more of a group one because I feel that we all have the same struggles in life. You know, I'm not always happy. Like I'm not saying that I'm sort of, you know, the end product of happiness. Like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm striving for it, you know, like well, we're all a work in progress, aren't we? We are, right? So um, I think as part of a community, I think I would be able to offer a lot more and the community back to each other. Like women are so amazing, we're so resilient, but if we just have that beautiful support network, 
I think I'll be um, able to provide something a bit more, a bigger ecosystem of this whole happiness bubble that I live in for everyone to be a part of. So I'm sort of working on something to do with, I don't know if I do it in a membership style or a Facebook group, but I want to do lives and and, you know, invite other people in and have topics so we can all just sort of, you know, every week have something to like look forward to. Otherwise, you know, you download a product and it's like, oh, six weeks of whatever and you don't really follow through. Yeah, and you're on your own as well. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. And what about, tell? I mean, give the families and, and parents and mums and sing, whoever's listening, like give us some things or ideas or how to bring in happiness and fun into the home. Like is there something that you do, like do you have rituals or do you have rhythms or is there something that you can suggest to help people bring that fun and happiness element in? Oh, look, absolutely. I mean, you just brought up, you know, rituals and routines. We have this thing about routines are like your, you know, constant groundhog day, you know, repeating action, you know, just obviously the kids learn to pack the dishwasher and so they're learning their skills because I always say to them, you're going to be a flatmate one day. If you leave your uh, clothes on the floor, you're not going to be, you know, the best flatmate. So routines are obviously, you know, do I have to do it, mum? You know, whereas with the rituals, our routines are now fun because we're being more creative. So if we're doing the washing, you know, we're doing something fun at like a little game or if we're doing the vacuuming, you know, the, the music's really, really loud, beyond loud because we don't want to hear the vacuum. So, um, you know, and, and, and I'm trying to sort of give them a bit of meaning behind it as well because you don't want to raise children by, oh, got to do the chores or be paid to do things that is a life skill that they need to have as adults. Yeah, I've never paid them for house, I call it Home Beautiful. It's on our little inside pantry. So Home Beautiful, everyone has to sort of, you know, clean out Nina's bowl and we rotate it. So that's, that's the other dog, thing that I like to way. keep it fun. <laughs> yeah, Nina is our little Frenchie. So if she's done her little number two, we don't just have one person picking it up. So it's you know, on rotation. Good patrol. <laughs> so you've got to keep it fun <laughs> and, you know, yeah, change it up a bit. And, you know, the rewards at the end, you know, there's times when, Obviously, my kids are getting a bit older now, so they are looking at sort of money stuff. But I've always just had things where kids just want to be with us. So when we do something around the home, I have then either, I've always made it my ritual mantra, or whatever you want to call it. We just always spend such a good afternoon. We're either crafting, we've gone for a surf, we've gone to walk Nina. We've just sort of done fun stuff for the kids because ultimately, you know, we need to be doing stuff that's fun for them that makes them happy rather than, oh, do you want to go to Woolies and do you want to come for a shop with me? And it's like, that's not fun. They're not happy doing that unless you reword it to say, because I've done it, where we've said, meal planner, I want you to learn to cook. I want you to cook for me because that's when they go, oh, mum's going to let me cook and chop and, you know, do all this stuff. So that's what makes it sort of happy for us. And tell us, final question, your top three tips to living a longer, stronger, happier, healthier life. Oh, look, it would be just stopping, like, you know, hearing your heartbeat, but be in that present moment, you know, just get everything out of, you know, the, the monkey chat. So put that down as maybe meditation. Um, eating really well because good mood, good food yes. has always been my mantra as well. Um, and then just moving your body. You have to. Like this is my natural endorphins every day. That's why people go, I can't believe you like this. And I'm like, it's because of the food I eat. It's because – you know, I moved my body and it's because of connection with people. I mean, there's a 300% rise in loneliness. Like people are so lonely, even if they're behind a device, looking at other people's lives, they are so lonely. So you have to be happy within yourself, build that happiness, you know, for yourself so that you can then share that happiness with other people because it's infectious. Absolutely. You're so right. You're so right. I mean, we're so disconnected, aren't we, as a society now? Even, I mean, I don't know where it is, where what it's like where you live, but I know where we are, it's like very, you know, people kind of, you don't see your neighbours, you don't, you know, the kids don't hang out Oh, the yeah, you like, guys are in lockdown too. Yeah, you had a massive lockdown. We did. But even so, you know, like even for the kids, like they don't hang out in the streets, like because everyone lives such itinerant lives where the kids' activity is also structured. So they're only really seeing the kids that they're, you know, got those activities with and then outside of that there's no real freedom or that, you know, the, a lot of kids, like my son was actually complaining about it the other night, like he doesn't have friends that he can, because the parents won't let them or he can't just go away even though he's 18 like some of the parents are still 
not wanting him or their child to go away with him because, you know, they don't yet have their licenses or, um, yeah, for whatever reason. So it's, yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting time, um, for the kids and, you know, just to, to make it, bring in that happiness, like what you're doing with the mundane things. I think that makes a big difference as well. Yeah. Turn them into more creative sort of fun things that, you know, give them sort of purpose. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, if they just go, oh, I'm just picking up this because I have to, it's just like, well, you're picking it up because we're going to pop it in the washing machine and tomorrow it's going to be all nice and clean and you're going to look nice and, you know, fresh. <laughs> so give them a reason for it instead of pick that up, you know. Of course they're just going to go, no, no way, Mum. back. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So where can people find you? Oh, where can they find me? Everywhere, <laughs> anywhere. So Danny Stevens on all social media platforms or just at dannystevens.com. That's with a V and an S and the Danny is at D-A-N-I. So, yeah, I'm pretty much either on Snapchat, Twitter, um, obviously my main Clubhouse, connection Facebook. is Instagram. <laughs> I love it I just because I love people. I just, I'm so happy when um, I connect with people. So I just love it. It's just the air that I breathe and you know, it's just what brings me joy. So that's where everyone will find me. So Beautiful. It's been such a delight talking to you as always. And um, just for the listeners as well, we are planning an event and I want Danny Stevens to be there. So stay tuned for that, everyone. It'll hopefully be later on this year. Um, and the focus will be on positive aging. It's a positive aging summit for women. Um, so yeah, we look forward to that as well. But thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else, Danny, you want to add? Thank you for having me too. Um, just keep smiling and be happy. Like my dad said, don't worry, <laughs> be happy, don't worry, be happy. So there you I go to your amazing audience. Have an amazing day. Thank you. Gorgeous. Talk soon. Love Lots you. Of love. Bye. You Bye. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and follow me on our YouTube channel, One Body, One Life to see more inspirational videos to help you reach optimal wellness and longevity. But until next time, don't forget, you've got to nourish to flourish.